Welcome to Echoes International Podcast, with teaching, interviews and stories of what God is doing straight from the mission field and also within the UK. For more podcasts, stories and opportunities to get involved, check out our website at echoesinternational.org.uk and our other social media channels. The brethren here are not very kind to me today. 25 minutes this morning to summarise the Tokoloki and 10 minutes to summarise 46 years. <laughs> um, let us uh, read from uh, Lamentations, uh, first of all. Let's, uh, yeah, let's start there at the top. First Thessalonians 1 verse 3. First Thessalonians 1 verse 3. Paul says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. A labor of love. And uh, Lamentations, we we know it so well. 3 and 23, great is thy faithfulness. And I think those two things would sum up Betty's life um, in so much in many ways. I was spoken, speaking to her this week, and she said, you know, uh, I love Di Balada. I love Di Balada. And uh, it's a <clears throat> tremendous thing, you know. We people who work in Mission Field, we love our work. Maybe I didn't make that clear this morning, but we really do love our work, and we love the people. And Betty has, has a great love for Di Balada, and that love will, even though she's at home now, that love will always remain. And great is thy faithfulness. We're looking back over 46 years here, ever since she uh, left for Africa in 19, uh, in 20, what was it, 1976, and just came home uh, there in June. And that's a wonderful record, 46 years of service for the Lord in quite a, in a very remote area. And I don't know, some of you here have obviously been to Deep Alada, but that's it. Uh, where is this work? Yeah. Where am I? Don't see it. But anyway, you see it in the center there. This is in the middle. <laughs> Little group of buildings in the middle of a jungle, really, or certainly bush. So that's where Betty has been for all these years. There she is. It's difficult to get a photograph of Betty, but uh, I've managed to get that one. Uh, you find that with most missionaries, actually. They're, they're very difficult to get photographs of. And uh, uh, what do you think of these characters? <laughs> it's a, um, some, uh, any offers for who that is? That's Mr. Geddes, in case I, uh, I'm away from the microphone. Mr. Geddes, who started to work at Dibalada when he came, I think, from Angola. Uh, what about this man? Jack Finnegan. Very good. That's his brother, Jack Finnegan. Um, more difficult, that one. That's uh, David Mawinney. Bob Neal. Anybody for out right on the left there? Bill Holiday, yeah. Bill Holiday, very good. So those were some of the men that were involved in the setting up of the work at, uh, at Deep Alata in 1948. So we're looking at a long history here, and uh, this goes for all of us. When we go to the mission field now, we're just building on a foundation that other great men of God have laid in the, in the past. That was the first hall at Deep Alata. It's a bit primitive. <coughs> but still a nice building. We think that's the first hall anyhow. That's it today. So there's a nice assembly there at Deep Alata. Uh, the fruit of work uh, over uh, many years by a number of uh, men and women of God. And that's the little assembly, our little uh, um, a hospital building. As I say, hospitals, the assembly came first and then once that was built in, there was the interest in the medical work. 
And you can't really avoid medical work in Africa. It's one of those things. Uh, I don't know what to say about Betty. She probably doesn't want me to say very much about herself, but uh, talking to her in recent times, if there's any young person and uh, you're interested in serving the Lord overseas, uh, I would strongly encourage you to go and talk to Betty about how uh, God, <coughs> God called her. It's a remarkable story. And, you know, <coughs> you don't want to... We, it's nice to talk about going out to the mission field, but you don't really want to go out there unless you're absolutely certain that God has called you to that work and that you have the backing of your, your own assembly. Because very often uh, there's many difficulties and it's a very difficult life at times. Uh, Betty was, um, she was saved uh, at 21 due to, through the preaching at the meetings of her brother Jim Martin up there near, just outside Van Bridge. And uh, she would, was friendly with a number of young sisters in Belfast. And one of them happened to be her sister, Anne Palmer, who uh, went out then to serve the Lord at, uh, at Deepa Lata. And, but uh, Betty initially worked as a telephonist. And then, like many other young people, and maybe many, some here today, and myself included, I think uh, I think I I told you this morning that it was only in my late teenage years I started to ask God what He wanted me to do with my life, and Betty was doing the same thing, and she got advice from a number of people. I think one she said was her brother Sam Kern, and how, how to know the will of God for our lives, and he said, well, the most important thing is to uh, be with the Word of God, to take guidance from from the Scriptures. And then God would guide you through circumstances and God would guide you through the advice of others. And all very sound uh, advice. If, you're, if we do things against those things, then we, we only end up getting into trouble. And uh, another brother, I think, she's, I'm just putting this together. Betty could correct me, uh, but she'll tell you the full stories if you go, go and talk to her. Another brother who advised her was her brother Ronnie Kearns uh, in Japan. And he said, you know, a lot of countries now, it's getting difficult to get into just as going as a missionary. You, you need a special qualification. So it'd be good to do a job that you could get a visa easier to enter the country. And that's still very good advice today. Uh, countries are very sophisticated now. And Zambia is, is no exception. And they expect people to have qualifications to come and help in, in the country. Um, so one, thing she, one place she didn't want to go, strangely enough, was Africa. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard that this little uh, chorus about, don't send me to Africa. And I think many people feel like, you know, there's a lot of bugs and snakes and things like that that don't, aren't very nice. But anyhow, Betty did... She did nursing uh, and midwifery with a thinking that that will be, would be a good start. So she started going, or started, she went to uh, a hospital in England called Sorrento. And there she did a year's general nursing and then she did uh, a year and a half of, uh, of midwifery. So Betty became a very skilled uh, person in that. She still wasn't sure about where to go, and I, I just can't give you the exact details, but she looked to the Lord for three different times that she would be asked to go to Deep Alata. So she wasn't rushing at it. And that's good advice too. God doesn't do things usually in a hurry. And uh, she, eventually she got a third uh, call from God to, about service at Dibalata. And uh, so then the next step was, well, also Jim, strangely enough, Jim Martin was involved a bit in that call as well because Betty was working in, in, in near Birmingham, no, Northampton, and Jim went over there to take some meetings and Betty, Betty was asked to show him around the city. And the, uh, she was discussing these things with, uh, with Jim. 
uh, and Jim said to her, Betty, I think you, you will one day go much further than, uh, than Northern Ireland. So he, uh, that was his feeling that Betty was going to the, uh, the, she felt that was also pointing her in that direction. So then she got those three calls confirmed and the, so then she approached the elders at uh, Banbridge uh, about uh, commending her to the work and uh, at Tipalata. And <clears> their <throat> response was, Betty, we are not at all surprised. And they willingly commended her uh, to the work at Tipalata. And you know, <clears throat> that's another, I think, wonderful thing that if God calls us to a place, it, it should really come as no surprise to our local church fellowship that and they can be happily commend you and you go out with the full assurance and confidence of the backing of her of her brothers and sisters. Uh, she got there in 1976, as I say, to join her sister and Palmer already there. And uh, well, what a wonderful record of uh, of service this has this has been 46 years uh, much of it spent in um rather in isolation it's a very isolated place place deep a lot of. Uh, Anne palmer was there for uh, with her for 20 years and mrs finnegan and one or two others at times but very often much of it was on her own uh, what can i say um to someone who or about someone who has done as much as Betty. This is 46 years. I spoke, I remember what I said this morning about medical work being continuous, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and so on. That's been Betty's life, which is quite a, an amazing thing. And uh, the sometimes they would have four or 500 deliveries a year one day she told me she delivered um, 10 babies in one day. And uh, all the time at the, this work was on at the clinic, it's always associated each morning uh, with the preaching of the gospel. So it was a center of care for the people and it was a center where the gospel uh, went forth. And uh, a number of people came along and uh, over the years, I was going to say one of the terrible, amazing things that happened early on in her, when she went out, I think it was just after a couple of years, and again, you should talk to her about this, but two, about two years after she went out, they were traveling in a car with Ann Palmer, and the vehicle overturned at, um, in Botswana, and Ann was trapped under the vehicle. And it was just amazing how God had arranged People, the people came off the immigration to push the car off on. Betty had to give uh, artificial respiration for a long time, several several minutes before they got on uh, around again, and then they arranged an evacuation by uh, by plane, which happened to be there as well. Uh, so when you're in the will of God, it's amazing how God uh, provides in those. Really, you can imagine like trying to resuscitate your your, your best friend. Uh, but God gave Betty the strength to do that. So th that was a little hospital that uh, our brother Tommy Craig and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Wolfie Bickerstaff and others went out and built. Now that is a wonderful testimony still in Lundaland. The people uh, say uh, how wonderful this building is. It's, it's a beautiful clinic. Even the local priest was very impressed with this building. He thought it was a wonderful thing. Uh, th that's the, her sisters, that's Betty, I think. Uh, and that's Anne. And that's uh, Mrs. Finnegan. As far as I know, if my information is correct. Now there's an interesting photograph. There's also the, a, a, we got a, um, uh, an airstrip at Deep And uh, then when Betty got the, uh, the building, she also incorporated a, th a small theater in it. So for several years now, I've been able to go over, we fly over on a Monday, and we operate all day. And actually, you, you think that uh, 
We go for the operating, we don't really. We go for Betty's cooking, <laughs> as some people would know. Uh, they, the, Betty does wonderful fish and chips. And the, uh, if I'm looking at a team to go to Deep Alata on a Monday, I have no trouble getting volunteers because they're queuing up to come. Um, but if you look at that photograph, uh, between Betty and Jack there, you have over 100 years of service for the Lord at this little tiny spot in uh, Deep Alata. So it's quite, uh, quite amazing uh, the God we serve. And uh, we thank God for Betty's work over these uh, uh, 46 years. We are going to miss her. It's a tremendous loss. Betty was always there. I told you this morning we were from the same assembly in Banbridge. When I was younger, I remember praying for Betty. We went to Congo initially, and, but I never dreamt that in a number of years later I was going to be working with Betty. And uh, so she is a, Betty is a pretty tough lady, I assure you. Not very big, but she's very strong in all sorts of uh, ways. Uh, now, what's that one? That's, uh, oh yes, that's resuscitating a baby. Uh, a section baby. She's resuscitated it, and now she's just checking. And then that's Betty. With her. She's very happy now. The baby has been kitted out, and usually in things from Northern Ireland, sisters that they send out, and they they're they're um, set up. But when you've done all those years, all those deliveries, I mean, you think it would be second nature to you. Be Betty can do. I, I should have said. She can do things that doctors wouldn't attempt here. You know, she's skilled in doing breach deliveries, doing vacuum extractions, dealing with postpartum hemorrhages, you name it, and she can do it. And the very tough thing about working with Debalati is she's 40, about 30 miles from the nearest hospital, and she often has to make a decision, uh, when will you transfer this patient uh, for further care, maybe need surgery? And th those are very big decisions for a nurse to make in the middle of the night in a very difficult uh, situation. So it's been a wonderful record of service for God and the people of uh, Dibalata. Uh, this is Brother Joshua. And Joshua, he represents for me also footsteps worth following. Joshua was a brother who came from um, Angola and he came with Mr. Geddes and he was one of those people who didn't have any diplomas, but they were taught to do medical care. And he's provided medical care for the people of that area for many, many years. I think he was there when, when Betty first went there. He was a, Betty described him to me as a, a godly, a quiet and godly brother. But he was an elder in the assembly. He would preach the gospel and then he would see the patients. And there's been so many African brethren like that Nowadays, we've got more gift, or we've got more diplomas and things, but it's, medicine is more to do with the heart than very often the intellect. And these brothers were, did a wonderful service for God. Uh, and that's uh, Brother uh, Joshua. Again, it's support from home. That's the, the, the container arriving with the, uh, the, the parcels. And that's used for making up little parcels for Sunday school. And Betty has spent many, many hours uh, there. And that's her again. And uh, I don't know if you can see this photograph too well, but that's the road ahead. <laughs> Betty's standing there. And you see the two, um, the two uh, young ladies heading forward. And uh, we don't know what the future holds. Any, if they look back, they would see Betty there. Betty's no longer there. Um, but the work goes on. And uh, do I have confidence in the work continuing to deepen at it? Well, yes, you know, as our brother mentioned there, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will never prevail. Uh, our young sister is there, they could look back and see her. <laughs> they can't do that now, and there's an obstacle there, but they'll just have to learn to get it out of the way and go on with God. So uh, we commit better to your prayers. Uh, and uh, it's a big transition. It was a transition going to Africa. It's a huge transition coming back. 
uh, into a different world from 1976. Do pray for her and uh, commit her to the Lord. Uh, remember her, her in your prayers. But we do thank God for all those years of service. And that's the last photograph. That's uh, Janelle Highcoop, who is the midwife who will be taking over, uh, and Mark, her husband, at Dibalada. Do remember them in prayer uh, uh, in this big responsibility. Uh, thank you. I think I've gone a bit over the time here. And now I think we're going to have a presentation. Um, a small, um, as I said this morning, it's, uh, uh, does this well, go down there? Yeah. All the bit. I come down here because I don't think it's facing up. So Will you hear me? Hey, then you come. All right. Yeah. I'll come. I'll come to the back. Maybe it's good to ask it. It's that big. It's Benny's birthday yesterday or two days ago. Sure enough. So, that's the third. So, uh, the, the folks thought it would be very nice to give Benny uh, something in the earth, a sort of recognition of all the her years in Africa and also of her uh, birthday. Uh, so, we're really giving this to the first time. Thank you. 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 Let me just pray for the three of them. Let me just pray. Father, we give thanks for a God who's faithful. We think of the work at Ipalata, and we think of the work in Zambia, and we can look back and give thanks for all that you've done. And we pray for Betty. We give thanks for her service. And again, we just ask that she settles back in the land, that you would just be with her. Just promise as always to be with her, and just bless her as she seeks to serve with you as well. And for David and Lorraine, as they would travel back on Thursday, Father, we pray for them. We give thanks for their service. We thank you for work in Chip as well. And again, as we think of a, a, a land that you've transformed with the gospel, we thought earlier of the, of the president, and we pray for him also. But Father, we just pray for David and Lorraine as they would travel back. We give thanks for them. And again, we ask that you bless them on their journey. And so far, it's time to be with each other and be together. We do give thanks. We hope you're encouraged and inspired and ready to answer the call. Thank you for listening.